Hey guys, welcome back to this new series of Devos from OAM called This Ain't That. This week we're continuing our talk about faith versus works. So if you haven't seen last week's edition, you can go and watch it by clicking on the link right up here. Let's jump in. Hey guys, and welcome back. So last week we began thinking about the traditionally held view that faith and works contradict or oppose each other. We looked at several passages that seem on the surface to support this understanding. And it's where we get a lot of those doctrines from. But as we read those passages in context, we see that the works that were really being rebuked by God were not righteous acts at all, but some perversion of God's commands. We hopefully have seen that works are not at all in opposition to faith. They're only in opposition to our faith if what we do contradicts what we say we believe. So in this week's video, the big question is, just how important are works to God? And try not to think of this as to whether it's a salvation issue or not. I mean, is it? Well, I can only say that from what I understand of Scripture, Yeshua's words, the patriarchs and prophets, is that they weren't really concerned about an eternal salvation like we are today. In other words, they weren't concerned about just making it in, but how they made it in. They believed in and even hoped in a messianic kingdom. And because of that, they put their full energy into being obedient and honoring God in their present lives, in the ways they lived. With us today, we want to make everything about a salvation issue. And if it's not a salvation issue, we toss it to the side as being ancillary to our lives and not important. I mean, just how shallow are we really trying to be? We are given salvation through Yeshua, and I assume that if you're watching this video, you've already dedicated your allegiance to God and believed on Yeshua as Messiah. That's kind of a given. I assume you're already in the family. So listen, please let's move on from this being about a salvation issue, and let's see what the Word bears out and see truth for what it really is. So think about it like this. If I, who already have my own biological children, uh, were to adopt a child, an older child, who was not raised in the way that I've raised my children. And some of you watching may have experienced this. He or she would come into the family with a, a different set of standards, um, behaviors, and ways of thinking, and would bring that into our home. They could be legally adopted as mine. Mine, I mean, they're in. But if they don't begin to learn how to live in my house under our rules, learn to do life the way we do, and, and have the relationship with me like my own kids do, if they don't integrate or assimilate into our family, will they ever really enjoy all of the benefits of being adopted? They can be mine, yet never fully enjoy what it means to be mine. I hope that makes sense. As you know, Hebrews 11 is all about the heroes of faith. We hold such admiration for those mentioned in Hebrews 11, and we're all in awe of their stories and their lives. And while we tend to focus on the belief part of their faith, we rarely focus, and I mean really focus, as in with a desire to imitate, on the works part of their faith. In the opening of Hebrews 11, verses 1 and 2, the writer of Hebrews says, And belief, or faith, is the substance of what is expected or hoped for, the proof or evidence of what is not seen. For by this the elders obtained witness. This entire chapter is about how the elders, the heroes of faith, materialized by their lifestyles what they understood as the promised kingdom of God. By belief, Abel offered. By belief, Noah built. By belief, Abraham obeyed and left his homeland throughout the whole chapter. Their hopes, their belief was manifested in works. Because they believe, they acted. As verse 1 says, faith is substance and evidence. Those are two very physical, tangible describers, substance and evidence. They are physical proof of something unknown or unseen. I bring out this point again because we have made living for God and the things of God so ethereal and mystical and magical that it has actually damaged the people of God and the body. I mean, of course, there's a spiritual side to faith, but when we make everything so mentally and emotionally, oh, I'm sorry, spiritually subjective, then everything loses its meaning and we begin to actually pervert and twist the things of God instead of honoring Him by His ways. Because what we're really doing is that each person is molding God after our own desires, not willing to be molded to the truth of God's Word instead. This is exactly what James tells us. And I love James because he's just so matter-of-fact. I mean, if you ever want to get slapped around a little bit, just open your Bible to the book of James. 
in chapter two, he says, so belief, if, if it does not have works, is in itself dead. But some might say, you have belief and I have works. Show me your belief without your works and I shall show you my belief by my works. In other words, what I believe will be shown in my physical actions. Interestingly enough, James goes on to talk about Abraham, who we just referred to in Hebrews 11, verse 21. Was not Abraham our father declared right by works when he offered Yitzhak his son on the altar? Do you see that the belief was working with the works, and by the works the belief was perfected? And the scripture was fulfilled, which says, Abraham believed Elohim, and it was reckoned to him for righteousness, and he was called Elohim's friend. You see then that a man is declared right by works and not by belief alone. Hmm. So Abraham was not called Elohim's friend, nor was he declared righteous because of what he understood in his head or even the words that he proclaimed out of his mouth. He was called a friend of God and counted righteous because of works. Let that sink in a little. In a religious culture where faith is all about mental assent, these often read scriptures should really be read again because frankly, guys, we've missed it. See, the biblical understanding of faith is all about action. It works like this. I believe so much. I'm so confident, so convinced, so trusting in what I believe that I act in accordance with that belief. I have no choice. To not act at all or to act in a way contrary to what I say I believe is not faith at all. It's schizophrenic at best. Do you see how this contradicts what is often taught using passages like Isaiah that we talked about last week? Israel's acts of righteousness were not for a lack of actions, but actions that were contrary to what they supposedly believed and spoke. Righteousness comes down to what we do and that lining up with the truth of Scripture. Not what we believe and not what we say. And believe me, I understand that we can genuinely, you know, fully trust in doctrines and dogmas. And when we speak about those things, we sincerely want to believe what we say. Also, please understand, I'm in no way questioning anyone's sincerity. I don't know your heart, and I choose to believe the best about everyone's intentions. So this is not a slam. But you know, a phrase I hear all the time is, well, God knows my heart. As a matter of fact, I used to say this all the time. Do you ever notice when we say that? Isn't it usually when we've really messed up? Or when we know we should do one thing, that's what God expects, but we decide instead to do another? Really, it's often a justification to simply do what we want or excuse away an intentional sin. Well, I may have messed up, you know, but God knows my heart. The truth is that God indeed does know our hearts because he's smarter than we are. Yeremiah or Jeremiah tells us in chapter 17 that the heart is crooked above all and desperately sick. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart and try the kidneys or innermost parts and give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his deeds. And what does a wicked heart produce? And the works of the flesh are well known, which are these adultery, whoring, uncleanliness, indecency, idolatry, drug sorcery, hatred, quarrels, jealousies, fits of rage, selfish ambitions, dissensions, factions, envy, murder, drunkenness, wild parties, and the like, of which I forewarned you, even as I also said before, that those who practice such as these shall not inherit the reign of Elohim. So what are our works showing evidence of? The amazing thing about how God designed us is that we don't need for someone else to tell us how we're doing. We have a mirror in our own lives that we face every day called our actions, our behavior, our works. Think about this. If Abraham would have received God's promise, the amazing promise, and the challenge to leave his home and follow God, but instead just said, nah, that's cool. I already have the promise. You can bless me here. What would have been the outcome? If Abraham hadn't proved his belief by his actions, would he still be considered the father of the faith? So how important are works to God? Well, if it's how Abraham was reckoned righteousness and attained friendship status with God, if it's how the elders, the heroes of faith, obtain their witness, and if it's how we are rewarded according to our works, then it seems to be pretty significant, much more significant than we've been led to believe. Now, I know this video may have been a little harder than what you expected, but sorry, not sorry, because here's the deal. Is loving each other just encouraging us to stay in our own comfort zones? Is that love? Comfort zones that will inevitably lead us to our own destruction? That's not biblical love at all, guys. Heck, that's not even human love. 
We love one another by spurring each other on to good works, works that are pleasing to the Father and that draw us closer to Him, works that perfect our belief. So now that we've seen how important works are to God, next week we're going to start looking at what exactly are these works? How do we define which works are good? Heck, what is good? So thanks for joining us on the journey. I pray your life will never be the same.